So uh, welcome to the, to this session. Uh, my name is Jachim, and I'm presenting here uh, the GISQuick development team. Uh, we have here uh, also Martin Landa in this hall, and uh, unfortunately Mar Marcel Dansak, the main developer, is missing. But luckily we have here Ivan Minchik, uh, one of the uh, original authors of the idea of uh, GIS Quick project. So let me share what we have for you. We have uh, firstly presenting GISQuick at Phosphor-G Europe in France. Uh, and this is only second time. I work uh, mostly with Metler, my, my personally, but I'm a long time contributor to uh, various open source projects. Uh, maybe you may know me from the PyWPS project or from my previous life of uh, from Grass GIS team and uh, being also active in OSGO. Now let's jump to GISQuick. Uh, GISQuick, uh, the claim is let's share GIS much quicker. Let's share GIS data, GIS project in most possible easy way, easiest way as we can manage. Uh, so, and and the GIS project nowadays the standard or we, 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 we love to work with QGIS. So let's share QGIS projects uh, on the web the most easiest way uh, possible. <clears throat> we have already, or the project already, Kisquick, is used by several uh, several users. They are uh, universities as well as uh, commercial, commercial companies providing various services in agriculture as well as, let's say, urban planning uh, areas. It's not new, started even before 2016 uh, uh, because, uh, well, there, there was some history. Uh, it's completely open source software uh, released under, G under GNU GPL. Uh, so we are looking forward to more contributions. And <clears throat> of course, it's compatible with QGIS desktop because it's using QGIS servers backend. And for most easiest distribution and installation, uh, we are providing Docker images and all the, all the Docker infrastructure. You can find all necessary pieces of code on uh, GitHub, under github.com slash kisquick, all the repositories and configuration files. Yeah, and as I was saying, oh, uh, when you have a project which is somehow complicated, let's say, or anyhow complicated, uh, in, in QGIS, you can instantly convert it into web application having the same legend, having the same features. And I may show you how. This is achieved by uh, a plugin. Uh, QGIS plugin, which is well installed into QGIS, and then you just basically uh, the plugin is there to be to to connect your desktop instance with server. In our case, here in this example, it's demo Gisquick org, but it could be any other server or any other instance of the server. <coughs> and once you are connected, you are uploading. Uh, it, you, you, you upload the data to the server and create a map. And the, the mapping application should be uh, easy to be understood for non-GIS professionals. And it provides uh, uh, the basic features we would be nowadays expecting from a web mapping application. We, we are uh, not going deeply into having all kinds of fancy features but some of them are there. <coughs> now, one of them, as you can see, is, for example, measuring, but there are more, and I will talk about it. The user interface of the web application is a, has a responsive uh, web design, so it works on cell phones, and you can give it a try during the conference. Uh, it works on cell phones as well as on, well, big dis desktop. There is a advanced filtering or searching of features, vector features. Of course, there is legend, uh, layer switcher, and uh, we call it feature data detail panel or feature attributes panel. And <coughs> uh, there is also vector uh, and uh, attributes or geometry and attributes uh, edit editing tool. I always say never 
Never try to edit geometry on your cell phone or web interface, but the possibility is there. And there is also possibility to get a hard copy of your map uh, cut out, let's say, using uh, uh, generating a PDF file. This is how the interface looks when it's described. Uh, yeah, apparently the main part is the map canvas with zooming tools, uh, map scale, uh, but the most, second most important part is the layer switcher panel where we can see also the metadata of various layers or maybe turn on off, which I will show you later, uh, the attributes table and uh, also uh, switch to legend panel. Then there are some, some tools including measuring and printing and user menu, user menu in the right corner on the top. You can't switch the layout basically. <clears throat> this is how it is uh, and it has, there is a purpose for having it like this. For example, because of the responsive design. When you, when you start it on a device with lower resolution than a standard desktop screen, it, the, the UI will still be working. Oh, the only thing you can change is basically the logo. Uh, here we have uh, an example of the attributes table. So if the layer, vector layer, uh, allows you to display attributes, which is indicated with a small icon representing table uh, by the layer name and you click on it, you will immediately get a big attribute table with all the attributes again configured to be visible to a standard user and they can be filtered using filter button. Not depends on whether it is of course number or string or whatever other data type and you can also like zoom the feature and see the detail panel and there is also a possibility to export the data. So if you are into public institutions uh, and you want to distribute open data somehow, this may be one of the ways uh, how to enable the users to get directly to the shape file or CVS file or of course geo package. <coughs> the printing is based on QGIS templates which are part of the project. So if you configure your printing template in QGIS project and you store it and upload it to the server, they are used directly in the web mapping application. And you can switch uh, various, uh, of course, output formats, but especially uh, the resolution of the final map as well. So sorry, coming back, uh, in this case they are two uh, templates being available in the template. One of them is well, landscape uh, and the other uh, I believe, well, the title is, uh, yo, sorry, th this is the one template, sorry. <coughs> now, this was the map. This is what user sees. This is what you will see once, you, once we, we pass you the link to one of our demos. But you can also create an account in the demo GISQuick.org or if you install it, uh, you will go to the administrative interface, <coughs> which is maybe uh, even more interesting for this audience. In the administrative inter interface, you can set uh, the details of the project, uh, manage uh, user access, and uh, customize s some of the layouts, especially the feature detail or, yeah. And <coughs> get uh, the other links. This is how it looks. So once the project is like uploaded uh, to the server, you go through the configuration uh, which is marked on top of the page and the first one is so called general, con general or generic configuration where all the files which are being uploaded are displayed here and you, you can basically manage whether they are visible, which type of coordinate system they are because this is QGIS project, right? So the data can be anything, uh, basically, and there can be published in something completely different. And uh, what type of data provider it is, and uh, how is the file called. Uh, <coughs> so in our case, most of the data layers are stored in SQLite 3 database, just like that. But it could be shapefile or CVS files just as you would do it in standard QGIS uh, project. The next uh, step is uh, files. 
where you see just the list of files. There can be also like icons or text files, CVS files, which are connected to the project and which are essential for uh, running uh, the, the, the project. And one of them is also the QGIS files. Sorry, yeah, QGS, QGS files, so the, the project itself. And some metadata as well. Next step is uh, the map settings, where you uh, configure the basic layout. <coughs> so the first zoom, let's say, or once the map is loaded, what should be visible, whether you, strict, uh, you restrict uh, the panning to the, to the project or you allow the user to pan all around. Uh, you can set a scale row, let's say, because we are not uh, depending only on Mercator or Google Mercator uh, zooming. Of course, if you have one and if it works for you, then if the project is configured uh, using a Mercator projection, the default uh, list of scales will be exactly corresponding to this zoom levels. But this one is an example from Czech Republic data, Czech data, and here we have a decadic uh, zoom row, basically. Uh, in the next uh, step, we are setting map layers. So by, by default, my nice, by default, all the layers are considered overlays, overlay layers. But some of them, like the Orthophoto, which can be WMS service from completely different uh, provider, uh, we, you can you can switch it to so-called base layer. Therefore, the data are directly downloaded from the data provider and not going through the QGIS server. Uh, and as you can see, there is a lot of details which can be set uh, on each of the layer regarding attributes which are to be like visible to the standard user and data types, how they are to be uh, provided, whether there should be attributes table available or not to the public, and lots of other settings. If you, you can really fine tune uh, the permissions per layer and go very deeply into the detail, create group, uh, user groups well, and users as well of GIS Quick instance itself, and you can fine tune which attributes can and cannot be visible to which type of groups. Uh, you can fine tune whether user is allowed to see the attributes, edit the attributes, edit the geometry, and so on. So you can basically set, I say, everything regarding user management on layer level, not on feature detail level. I was mentioning customizable feature detail. <clears throat> this is, uh, by, by default, you, if you click on a feature, like identify object in the map by click, right, you will get a table of attributes. Nothing very fancy, nothing very special. But you can fine tune this, not only by setting which type of field it is, whether it is this, uh, the, the field is hyperlink, so URL or an image, so the image will be displayed, but also uh, uploading a template and configure it more in a more fancy way. And then you will get, uh, those are three examples of three various outputs of the feature detail. So if you click, for example, at a building, <coughs> you can get a, well, apparently this is a, this is a documentation to a building having a 3D model. There is a link to other documents, other images, and further files. Uh, or in this case, this, this, is, basically, this is basically the same. Uh, identified object, but this scenario shows us uh, yeah, watershed. Uh, uh, watershed characteristics of the small watershed we clicked into it and how, 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 the, well, how it uh, developed during the time in the past. <coughs> so it can be very complex or also, of course, very, very easy. And uh, we, we tried to be as open as possible, therefore GIS Quick uses as many open services or OGC open services as possible. And one of the advantage of uh, using QGIS server is, of course, there is WMS service available to the public. So 
once you publish your QGIS project to the server, not only you will get the user interface and the whole mapping application and all the admin interface, but also standard WMS service, which can be passed and shared to whatever other uh, client you may uh, wish. And that's it. We have still uh, five minutes time. I don't know if I am ready to give you a demo, uh, our live demo, since I'm holding the mic again. But uh, I would uh, totally advise you to go to demo Gizquick org, uh, where you will find a demo project uh, uh, and uh, try to uh, play it around it play with the project around. Not only you can play with the map, but also you can create your, your own account, uh, free account, and uh, try to host a small project. I think the limit is 10 mega of data, something like that, uh, just to upload it on uh, the demo server infrastructure and try it out with the admin user interface. So as I was saying, this is supposed to work with any QGIS setup you have. Uh, so not only Mercato projection, but the real life projections, let's say. And uh, yeah, give us feedback. If you want uh, some, some services uh, around it, like having it installed in your uh, institution and you don't trust yourself, contact us at kissquick at opengeolabs.cz per email and we may uh, help you with installation uh, in your infrastructure with GISquick. Thank you for your attention. Now question time. Hey, uh, you said it supports uh, multiple projection and it's on the web. What's the, do you know what's the rendering engine for the map? I'm thinking maybe open layer, but might be something else. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, it's open layers. <laughs> That's it. Thanks. Uh, really cool project. Uh, as QGIS is also now uh, like supporting point clouds, do you also plan to integrate them or uh, supporting point clouds as a format? So do you have plans with it? Uh, we would have to ask our main developer, um, Marcel. Uh, I mean, as we are not planning to switch open layers. As long as open layers is going to support it, we are going to support it too, but I doubt that. <laughs> Thank you. There are more? Yeah. If your QGIS project is connected to a database, um, when you publish, is the project still going to be hitting the database? Uh, this is quite quite common scenario that there is a post GIS somewhere and your project is connected to it. This is right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the database has to have open inter interface. Uh, then it works because you are just uploading uh, the project file and everything has to be in it. Another scenario is that the PostGIS is available somewhere on closed network. Um, and then you have to slightly tweak the project uh, using text, text editor basically or some script and uh, like remap the, the, the connection uh, to some closed network. If the project is on the same, like Gizquick instance is on the same uh, server as the PostGIS po uh, database, then you can also, well, simply, you can find a way <laughs> how to get this solved and be secured. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't work like out of the box if, for example, your database is uh, in private network, but you upload the project to a public server, this kind of scenario is impossible, of course, to be solved. More? Well, then, thank you.